now is Tennessee Congressman and House Financial Services a Committee member, David Kostoff. Congressman, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much Good for morning, being Bernie. here. Where are we on this? Do you expect you'll get a vote on either of these bills this week? Well, the, the Democrats keep threatening that. And, and, you know, listening to what Senator Manchin said, he's exactly right. I mean, it, it, the, the word is, is that we could vote on a bill like this uh, Wednesday or, or Thursday. Now, I say that to you, Maria, we have not seen the bill. <laughs> we have not seen any text. And so if, in fact, we vote Wednesday or Thursday this week, uh, a lot of members, virtually every member is going to be getting a 1,000 or 2,000 page bill that we're going to be uh, asked to vote on within hours. But to Senator Manchin's point, uh, there are a lot of things that need to be done when you talk about a bill of this size, whether you're going to vote for it or not. And one of them is getting a score from the Congressional Budget Office. Let's see what things actually cost, what, what the debt's going to be, uh, what it's going to cost to pay for it. And we won't know any of that if, in fact, the Democrats rush this process, like they're talking about doing. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was happy that Joe Manchin really called them out for a lot of these, uh, really, what, what he said was shell games. And we've been reporting on that for weeks now, the fact that they try to come up with this number of under $2 trillion by making believe these federal programs are going to go away. In fact, when you look at this over a 10-year period, the reconciliation plan is close to $4 trillion uh, uh, it, without saying that chi you know, the child credit is going to go away in one year. What's, what's your take on the true cost of this reconciliation package? Well, it's going to be huge. And, and to your point exactly, um, we don't know what it's going to cost. And, and not only are you talking about the reconciliation bill, but remember we're also talking about the infrastructure bill. So, in theory, if those two bills were to pass, you're probably talking about four to five to six trillion dollars. With the T, this is massive spending. And the fact of the matter is, whether you're, whether you're a, a Republican, whether you're a moderate Democrat, frankly, whether you're a progressive Democrat, I think that you owe your constituents uh, the right and the duty, if you will, to know what's in the bill, to know what it's ultimately going to cost, right. which means it needs to be analyzed and we need a congressional budget office score. Uh, of course. And, and you don't have a score at all. So so how could you vote on something? I thought this op-ed in the journal today really nailed it. it. It says Manchin nails the progressive hostage strategy. And at the end of it, it says, look, Mr. Biden told the senators that the two bills were separate. And that wasn't true. Twice he's made clear that they are actually linked. The 19 GOP senators who voted for the infrastructure bill were double-crossed. House Republicans ought to make the Democrats pass this infrastructure bill on their own, with their own votes. If the progressives want to kill it, that's their choice. But they shouldn't be able to use GOP votes to ease their way to passing the largest expansion of government in decades. This infrastructure bill, what, is 11 percent infrastructure? So do you think that actually is going to get separated, or are the progressives going to keep going? Will you vote for this infrastructure plan? No. And, and I think you've got to take President Biden at his word. No, I won't vote for it. Uh, he has linked those two bills together. He has come to Capitol Hill twice, including last week, and said the infrastructure bill and this massive social reconciliation bill, they're tied together. They're linked together. And so uh, beforehand, if there may have been 10 to 15 to 20 moderate Republican congressmen that were going to vote for it, I think there are going to be far fewer that the Democrats can depend on, far fewer Republicans that will vote for the infrastructure bill because Biden has and Biden and Pelosi have linked those two together. And, and Congressman, over the weekend, you and your fellow Republican members signed a letter demanding answers about this proposal to pay illegal migrants $450,000 ahead. Uh, what the heck is going on? Are they seriously thinking about giving a million dollars per family to people who broke the law to, to breach our, our country? Eleven Republican senators are calling pre on the president to halt talks of these settlements. What can you tell us? Yeah, Maria, it's real. And, and it's totally within the discretion of the Biden administration to make these payments. So when you're talking about almost a million dollars per family, for, for people who have illegally crossed our border, uh, it's ludicrous. And, and you think about it, um, what, what does that say to people who are lawfully trying to, 
trying to become citizens of the country and to, to emigrate right. to this country. It, it's, a, it's a terrible mixed signal. Uh, it really concerns me. You're going to see uh, strong congressional uh, opposition to the Biden administration trying to make this uh, deal. But ultimately, it's the decision of President Biden whether those payments are made. Wow. That's unbelievable. Congressman, thanks very much. Of course, if anybody hears they potentially can get to America and get money, that's only going to increase the number of people coming here uh, illegally. David Kustoff, thanks for your leadership on that. We'll be watching. Thank you. Thank we'll you, see you soon, Congressman.